Is the mic on? This is going to get messy. I'm going to be honest. It's just it's going to be a, this will be a messy podcast. I'm already sweating. I've got a thermostat in front of me. It's 90 degrees. It's over 90 degrees in here. And I can't run the air conditioning because it'll get in the way of the recording. Well, welcome, everybody. Nice to have you here. This is What's Wrong with Orny Adams. This is episode 86. I'm happy to have you along for the journey. I'm happy to kidnap your ears. And, and just give you a couple of my thoughts. What, what's going on? I'll, I'll tell you this much. I'm sweating. I am sweating. I was in Las Vegas two weeks ago. 116 degrees. I have a picture on my phone of the temperature. 116 degrees. And people are still walking around with these tall drinks and plastic cups. And, and nobody's got water. I stayed inside. I just stayed inside. And I hydrated. And I, I just tried to stay healthy for my shows. Healthy, healthy for you guys. But it's nice to be back here in freezing Los Angeles where it's just 91, 92 degrees. It's unbelievable. I can't believe I read this this week. There's a bill in California to charge residents for electricity according to their income. So instead of everybody paying the same amount, if you make more, you pay more. I I find this very upsetting for several reasons. Uh, I can serve. I I have a house that runs on solar and I don't run the air, air conditioning much. I keep my electrical bill down, my water bill. I'm very conscious. And I'd like to say it's because I care about the environment, but it isn't. It's because I want a lower bill. And so... If I'm making more and have to pay more, then what's the incentive for me to conserve if I'm paying like a flat rate to get even on the grid? Second of all, and even more important, this is an intrusion of my privacy. The electric companies are privately owned. This isn't the state. This isn't taxes. This isn't you make more money, you pay more that goes to schools and roads. I get that. That makes sense. What business is it of the electric companies what I what I make? They're a private company. I'm a private citizen. None of your business. Now, I'll tell you what the solution is. And I invite my listeners to do this because this is what I will do if this bill's passed. I will put my electric bill under my 12-year-old nephew's name who has no income. And that's that's how I'll beat this. That's how. Welcome back, everybody. What's wrong with Orny Adams? Episode 86. I want to thank everyone that's watching these videos on Patreon. This is a good one. You can watch me sweat. And the people that are watching them later on YouTube. And everyone who listens. Thank you so much, everybody. I appreciate it. There's a lot going on. I have a lot to discuss in this episode. I've got some... What's his name, Kev? Orny. Orny. Adams. Adams. Sing along, everybody. I'm just looking at the monitor. I can't believe how good I look. Honestly. And I never get to say that. But I am sweating. This is going to get messy and fun. It's going to get sloppy. It's going to get sloppy here on What's Wrong with Orny Adams in Big Yellow. Boy, we have... uh, Not only has the planet changed, but we as humans have lost our absolute minds. I have called for it before worldwide nap. I believe that is what is needed. I'm bringing this all the way down here. I believe that is what is needed, is a worldwide nap. Even when I was flying out to Las Vegas, I don't fly my usual airline. I fly out of Burbank. And I it's not assigned seating. Take a guess what airline this is. And I sit down. I have an aisle. And once the flight starts, the woman in the middle seat informs me who has flown nonstop for 30 years that the person in the middle seat gets the armrest, not a armrest or an armrest, both armrests. And she proceeds to shove me off. She uses her elbows like weapons, turn into like an uh, MMA mat. She was like boxing out like in the NBA and took over. Not only is she on the armrest, but she's going over the, the border. She's now into my territory with her elbow. And she said, you know, she's trying to be funny. 
you know, you know, you, you, you know. Oh, no, here we go. Now I'm going to be part of an incident. You always wonder how these incidents happen. This is how it happens. You meet somebody that doesn't know to just shut up for an hour-long flight and sit there and share an armrest. Everyone has to speak their minds. I'm sick of people speaking their minds in public. She goes, you know, when you sit in the middle, you get both armrests. And I say, you know, I didn't know that. (laughs) And I put my arm right back on the armrest. And now it's one of these, like, we're pushing into each other. And I said, you know, the, the woman next to you, right? They're on business. By the way, they're on business. Uh, they, 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 they're both, before the flight took off, they knew each other. They were on business calls, doing a lot of business. Doing a lot of business on the airline where you have to, you don't get an assigned seat. Doing a lot of business. And I said, you know, the woman next to you. So why don't, why don't you, why don't you just take up her armrest and lean into her? And she kept pushing and i said this is going to be an incident i'm going to be on it on the news as part of an incident because there are more flights being disrupted by unruly passengers and i read about another one today that or the other day that was diverted i think it was flying like atlanta to who knows where diverted to denver they took the two pa- passengers you see the video there's a fist fight an actual fist fight on the plane isn't that fantastic isn't that what you want when you're flying it sucks enough to fly. Now you have to uh, see a fight break out. You have to fear for your safety. And these women are going at it. I think somebody spilt a drink on somebody. And now there's a fight. And they divert. Imagine that. Imagine you're the reason a plane is diverted. Oh, I would be embarrassed. I would be so embarrassed. And they take the women off the flight. And here's what it said in the article. No arrests were made. Well, well, that's a hell of a deterrent. Why why aren't we arresting people that are getting into fights in public places and it's on video? If you get into a fight, they have to divert the plane. You should be fined so much money that you never do it again. You should pay for everybody's time that, that was on the plane, the pilot, the, the flight attendants, the ground crew, everybody. You should pay the airline for having to divert and change and screw up their schedule. You should pay for the other people that are waiting for this plane in another city to hop on it and have it take them somewhere else. There's a fly in here. That's what needs to happen. And then this crap stops happening. Like when I see all these smash and grab videos, I see the same thing over and over again. Security guards just standing there watching. Now, I'm not saying that they should jump in. I'm not, I, I wouldn't jump in. But then why have security? Why have security? Just open the doors. Let the people like me that are going to pay, pay. Let the people that aren't going to pay just take crap and leave. That I guess that's where we're at. I guess that's where we're at. Uh, there are fights in movies. And it's not just America. I'll, I'll have you know. Proud to say that we have now exported uh, crazy behavior in public. And apparently nobody cares if they're caught on video. Nobody cares. Nobody. They see the cameras rolling. You know if you misbehave now. It's on video. Fight broke out in Brazil at a Barbie movie. Imagine that. Imagine that. Barbie. A Barbie movie. (laughs) Oh, my neighbors. I was out watering. And my neighbors, they they were in there getting, getting in their car and they said, guess where we're going? And they looked sort of dressed up. I said, uh, church? I don't know why I said that. They said, no, the look. And they, they, they he had like purple, gl- pink glasses on. I still didn't figure it out. You know, I mean, I don't know what, I'm supposed to be in Hollywood. I'm supposed to know what movies are opening. He said, Barbie. I, I can't believe I live next door to these people that they're dressing up. I go, you don't cosplay for Barbie? He goes, yeah. So they went to see Barbie as a, as a date. <laughs> if if I was dating a woman and she said we're gonna get dressed up and go see Barbie, uh, I would know I'm dating the wrong person. That's me. So, but I, I thought this was a, a feel good movie and a fight broke out. Then in Florida, Pampano or something, Florida, uh, a fight broke out at a movie theater. I think I have the article. 
Maybe I don't. S listen to this. A 63-year-old man was assaulted. A 60-year-old victim told officials he and his wife purchased VIP tickets for the movie, which included advanced seating. When they arrived to the theater, however, two people were in their seats. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. What do you do? I don't think I would say something. I, I just, I, I, I'm at the point now where I, just, I, don't, I don't want any conflict. Because I know what's going to happen. Like I was in an Uber the other day. You know, it's 90 degrees. And this person decides he wants to drive with the windows open. No concern for me, the passenger. I'm in the back sweating, hyperventilating, and uh, coughing. Giving every hint that I want the window. Doing this. And I didn't want to say something. I'm not kidding. I thought he might turn around and just start punching me. I said, hey, do you mind putting on the AC? I thought he might just start turning around punching me. Then I was in a, a ride chair and they had a camera pointed at me. Record. I said, what is that? And he said, oh, it's, a, it's recording us. It's for your safety. I go, my safety? Well, are you going to attack me? I'm not going to attack you. What, what's my right to privacy in these ride chairs? Because I don't feel like that's any of his business. And I don't feel like the electric company, what I make is any of their business. And I feel like if I go to a movie theater and I, I get assigned seats, right? That's what you do now. You pay $30 a ticket. You, you get to pick where you s sit. What if you went to ask an employee for help? Would the employee help? Or would it be like security at these smash and grab places where, and by the way, I saw it the other day. I was in a store and I saw a father and son walk in and just take a child's game that was wrapped up with um, like uh, electric, uh, 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 like a security pack on it that would go off. And he just walked out with it with his son, holding his son's hand. No one does anything. I'm just sitting there, you know, paying for my shit. Not sure why anymore. Um, She's 63. He got beat up. They haven't found the person yet. Even though in Florida they have multiple cameras on the person that beat up this 60-year-old, 63-year-old man. You can see the video. The, the person attacking him is very big, in really good shape, and the 63-year-old looks 63. Not in great shape at all. And this person just pushes him down on the ground and just starts wailing on him over a seat. Then they get up and they leave. So what did they accomplish? They didn't even get to see the movie either. So you beat the crap out of a 63-year-old and you don't get to see the movie. This is where we're at. This is why I don't go to movies. This is why I don't leave the house. Here's another reason I don't go to movies anymore. This is an article from Vanity Fair. This is forwarded to me by my producer at KFI. You know, I'm doing a radio show over there from time to time. Been invited to do it every Sunday, but it's a lot of work. And then if I do that every Sunday, where's my energy to do this? Where's my energy to do this anyway? Um, this is from uh, July 20th, 2023, Vanity Fair. Why are movies so long? Yeah, that's a great question. I've been asking this for years. Why are movies so long? I understand some movies like The Godfather, but now like The Little Mermaid is 15 hours. Who's got the patience? I thought... I thought we had lower attention spans. I, I'm confused what's happening here. All I see is people on their phones looking at TikTok videos. It's fascinating. I, wa I watch young people watch, look at videos. They go up. They look one, two, three. They star it, hard it, up. They don't. They never finish a video. Certainly not watching my, you know, three minute videos. My my little uh, my little videos. <laughs> They're not gonna, they would never make it through that. All I see is. Fights, fights in public places. I see uh, gross things happening. I see a lot of attractive, attractive people doing things that if I did, nobody would watch for two seconds. But because they're attractive, well, now, now we're going to watch. I, I've said this a long, for a long time. We, we've got to stop indulging good-looking people. We have to treat them worse than we treat average people. Average, we are the majority we must take back this planet. 
The length of movies has been creeping up for years, even as streaming, TikTok, and absolutely everything else in our culture has rewired our brains to respond to shorter and shorter bursts of content. Because we've adapted to new rhythms of storytelling, binging a five-hour limited series is a guilty pleasure, whereas watching a three-hour movie can be painful. I I would say that. I would say that. You want to know what's coming out? Uh... Christopher Nolan's is out now. Three-hour atomic bomb epic Oppenheimer is out. Three hours. Martin Scorsese's period crime saga Killers of the Flower Moon will clock in at three hours and 26 minutes. Movies are getting longer and longer. I remember the Titanic. I thought that was long. We don't have patience anymore. You know, I wanted to take my dad to see in my my parents, but I think me and my dad, my mom didn't want to go. Then my dad decided he would go Fablemans. We were going to go see the Fablemans when that came out in the movie theaters. I was excited to see a real director, Steven Spielberg, an artist, and what he would present to it. Well, guess what? My dad said, I don't want to go because it's two and a half hours. And I don't blame him. I ended up not going either because it's two and a half hours. Drama can be an hour and 45 and uh, comedy's 90 minutes. Get us in. Get us out. We just want to get in there without having someone beat us up, like at the Barbie mover in Brazil or this person in Florida that beat up a 63-year-old man. I want to get into a movie without being shot. I want no incidents. So the less time we're in there, less chance of an incident. Now these movies are so long. We're sitting in movie theaters so long. We're going to get that deep vein thrombosis. You know when you sit on an airplane for a long time, you develop blood clots, and then the blood clot goes up your leg vein and into your, into your heart and it kills you? That's what's going to happen. I'm telling you right now, somebody is going to die from long movie thrombosis because these movies are, are, are too long. You're not meant to sit that long. It's got to stop. I'm going to tell you uh, a nice story as I move on to another subject, about Gene Parrott, who's an Emmy-winning writer, passed away in November, and his family I've become close with. I'm going to do that uh, a little bit, a little bit later. Now, the world's gone nuts. I'm looking at the serial killers. We've got that woman that faked her disappearance in Alabama. Oh, this is lovely. Burger King assistant manager arrested for serving customers French fries from a trash can. I... Yeah, you must hate people to do this because they're not your French fries. You don't own the McDonald's. You're the assistant manager. By the way, I don't think you're going to get the promotion of manager now. <laughs> the assistant manager of a South Carolina Burger King has been arrested. This is why I stopped work. I stopped going to fast food. Besides, it's way too salty and I don't like it. But th- this is a fear of mine. Oh, we're down to 87 degrees. The assistant manager, I'm just looking at the thermostat here, 87, 37% humidity. I would like 60% humidity, eh, 50 maybe. I'm going to be honest with you. I don't know what humidity levels are and how to measure it or what I would like. Full disclosure. I just know I don't like 37. And I, I know I don't like a lot of humidity. I know you're supposed to keep cigars at like 72. That's like Cuba. So I don't want that. That's too humid. Something like 50. 50. Uh, South Carolina Burger King arrested for serving customers French fries out of the trash can. It's a woman. She was 39, charged with tampering with food. A felony. Good. Good. I'm glad that's a felony. Wait a minute. Was it charged? Okay, so this person was arrested. If I'm, th- I'm just glad somebody got arrested because I'm so sick of wasn't arrested. Now, had she uh, dumped French fries in a trash can took them out of a trash can and served it to somebody on a plane and they had to divert the flight, that she would not have been arrested. I, I'm glad. Let's. I want to arrest bad behavior. We must put an end to bad behavior. This is, this is a sad story. Man gets life sentence for killing teens after they did the doorbell prank. You know, the ding-dong ditch. Sorry, there's a truck out outside rumbling around. 
me slamming my cup down. Let me tell you something. I'm all for ding dong ditch. I'm pro ding. I know no one is expecting this stance from me. I'm pro ding dong ditch. I think that's such a beautiful right of 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 adolescence, childhood, going into puberty. I would much rather these kids ding dong ditch than be on their phones all day. And this these kids, it was a birthday party. This was in California, Riverside, California. A California man crashed his car into six teenagers after they played a doorbell prank on him in 2020. This guy, somebody rang, he, the kids rang the doorbell, was wearing a hoodie. He then gets in his car, chases the kids. They jumped into a into a uh, a car. I've got two articles I'm going through between in between here. Uh, the boys piled into their 2002 Toyota Prius and fled. The guy gave chase in his 2019 Infiniti Q50. Is that a good car? I don't know cars. Minutes later, he slammed into the, the Prius, forcing it off the road and into the tree. I think he slammed into him first. They stopped. They turned around. Then he got up to 90 miles per hour, slammed into them again, and killed three kids just playing ding dong ditch. What is wrong with this planet? What is wrong with people? People have lost their minds. Let people go to the movie theater. And if you don't have an assigned, if you're in somebody's seat, move. If you're sitting on an airplane, share the armrest. If somebody rings your doorbell and runs, you don't need to chase them. They, they, they're they gone for you. They're not standing there. They, they did what you wanted. They left. This guy said, oh, I, I thought they were a sex offender. It was a sex offender. It was going to hurt my wife and my two my two daughters that are like 16, twin daughters. Bullshit. Then he comes back. Here's the best part. This is why he got convicted. The guy comes back, doesn't call 911, falls asleep. They find his license plate, of course, at the crime. And he said, oh, I was, I was going to call. Uh, and then I got distraught. Then I passed out. Well, he's going to jail for life. But it got me thinking. I was never big into Ding Dong Ditch. I don't know why. I never was. I'd like to do it now. I'd like to do it now. But it got me thinking about being a kid and the fun we had, the innocence. The trouble we got into that wouldn't even be considered trouble now. And I'm encouraging everybody to think of your childhood memories because life is too difficult now. It's too overwhelming for everybody, especially as you get older. Think about the songs. Put yourself in a mood. Take yourself back to when things were simpler. Watch movies. Maybe it's E.T. Maybe it's Star Wars. Maybe it's even the the Titanic that was too long. I don't know. Find a way to return your brain to where it was when you were younger, freer, happier, all that stuff. Look at me. I'm lighting up just thinking about it. I'll think about summer camp. What else could I think about? What else What else brought me happiness? I had a paper route. I would walk everywhere. I would play basketball. I'd play basketball all day. All day. Listen to music. The Rolling Stones. Yeah. Your first kiss. I'm trying to remember that. <laughs> Take yourself back to simpler times when you were happier. Get out of now. Now sucks. You know these people that go, oh, live in the now. Bullshit. The now sucks. Live somewhere else. Live in the future. Live in the past. But the now, you can't even do ding dong ditch. Ding dong ditch. Looking at my stacks of articles here. I want to talk about, because I've had Jim Clemente on the podcast quite a bit, and he comes down to KFI, and I'm really into crime now. Isn't it wonderful? All we do is watch crime. That's the modern date. Hey, you want to come over and and watch a crime documentary? Want to cuddle and watch a crime documentary? I'm finally burnt out from crime. Too much crime. Too many serial killers. Too much violence. Uh, Is this the way humans are supposed to be? 
So this Gilgo Beach killer, this guy, I uh, been looking for him for years. I it's been on the news nonstop. Jim's been talking about it on uh, CNN. It's giving him crap because his uh, his Wi-Fi kept cutting out. Anyway, here's my question: This guy committed all these murders, right? Same with BTK. Bind, bind them, tie them, kill them. That guy, bind, tie, kill. BTK killer. Remember that guy? Didn't kill for a lot of years. I thought maybe he was in prison. They couldn't find him. Turns out he stopped killing for a long time because he said physically he couldn't do it anymore. And it's good to know that uh, serial killers have to retire because of their bodies too. It's, it's always the knees, right? The knees and the ankles that get you. These serial killers... This is what's confusing to me. And I can't figure out. Besides the fact that they're just killing people. But they're married. They have kids. They have family. And yet, how do they find time to do this and get away with it? If I'm dating a woman, I can't even like sneak off to the gym for a couple of hours. Like, I, 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 get, I get the Inquisition. Oh, you're at the gym? You went to the gym? Yeah, I went to, I went to the gym. What time did you go to the gym? 11.20. 11.20, okay. What, what time did you get back? Uh, one, 1.45. 1.45. One hmm, yeah. What'd you work on? Which body parts? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, uh, and uh, at uh, uh, 12.45, you didn't see my text? Man? Like, uh, how, did, how does somebody with a wife... And kids find I know that this guy killed when his family was away, but still, how do you, how do you, I, I don't know. And then Jim and I were listening to 911 calls, especially, particularly the one of the, uh, this woman, did you hear about this woman? I, I don't want to use people's names, but she faked her own disappearance. She faked that she was kidnapped. She, she was in Alabama. She said she saw a toddler walking down the street. And the uh, when she stopped to help the toddler, she was on the phone with her. She called nine one one, and then she was on the phone with her uh, family, and she screamed like she was being kidnapped. And I knew immediately, immediately, this was a hoax. I knew when I listened to the nine one one call. I knew, I knew she was faking her own disappearance. And, and sure enough, she had searched. You know, faking your own disappearance. Amber Alert. Do you pay a fine for that? Do you have to pay for Amber Alerts? You know, but this is what I picked up on. Because she said she saw a toddler on the side of the street. It was a busy street. Nobody else stopped. Nobody else called 911. I said, impossible, impossible, impossible that nobody else would have called 911 or stopped. That's how I knew it was a hoax. I knew it was a hoax. She called 911. This 911 operator was phenomenal phenomenal asked about 25 questions really good ones like like this and i thought that's why all 911 operators 911 operators they tend to be women you ever notice that they tend to be women because women know how to ask questions like that guys don't she was like it's a toddler how tall is the toddler what's the toddler wear what color eyes is the toddler crying does the toddler, is the toddler walking with traffic? Is the toddler on, which side of the street is the toddler on? Does the toddler have shoes on? How far is the toddler from the guardrail? Does the guardrail, a guy, we'd ask like one, there's a toddler in the, in the street. All right, we're sending somebody. I think that these, these 911 operators, some of them come up with great questions and they, then they have to decide what to tell the person. Do they tell the person, pull over, grab the toddler, do they tell, especially when like there's like an armed robbery or there's a robber in somebody's house, they tell them to either stay in the house, stay hidden in the closet. Like some of these 911 operators are phenomenal, but they should all be women. Women know how to ask the questions. That's for sure. Don't think I'm not developing this as a bit. You better believe it. 
want to thank everybody that came to my shows in Las Vegas at the Jimmy Kimmel Comedy Club. I'll be back there November 2 through 5. I want to thank everyone that came to my uh, another sold-out show at the Ice House in Pasadena. I will be back August 19th. I'll be... Uh, uh, I'm trying to think of what other shows. It's just filling in. I just, I think I just booked a theater in Cleveland. I think the New York Comedy Festival just made me an offer for November. Uh, in December, I'm in Irvine at the Improv, 8 through 10. Then I go back to Schaumburg in January. I've, I'm going to be in uh, Traverse City, Michigan. I'll be announcing all these dates. Back at McCurdy's in Sarasota in, in February 2024. Anyway, uh, and I'm doing shows around town, of course. Go to orneyadams.com slash tour for my tour schedule. It's at Orny Adams on social media, everything. And then if you want to write into this podcast, and I'm getting a lot of lovely, 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 lovely correspondence from people. The email is what's wrong at orneyadams.com. And I, I do want to say hello to Gene. Gene and his daughter, Melissa, they came to my show at the Ice House. Gene has seen me about eight times, I think six or eight, one of those roundish looking numbers. And I think he's coming back August 19th. And Melissa, after the show, they both bought merchandise. And Melissa said she listens to the podcast a lot. I think she said episode 24 is her favorite. Let me know, Melissa. You can send me that email. Let me know. But hello and welcome. And welcome to everybody listening. Welcome to all the new patrons. Welcome to everybody that is subscribing and liking and all that stuff. So cool. So cool. But also at my show at the Ice House was the Parrot family, Gene Parrot. Gene Parrot is a comedy writer, wrote for, I, I, I think, Carol Burnett. Uh, he wrote for Welcome Back Carter, Bob Hope, won, won Emmys. But most importantly, when I was in high school, people always say, well, when did you know you wanted to be a stand-up comedian? Well, I, I sort of knew all along. And when I was in high school, I would read books on comedy, anything I could find written by a comedian or for a comedian. Sorry, I'm wiping sweat and looking in the monitor to make sure my hair still looks good. The vanity. I would find anything comedy related. I would listen to everything comedy. We had Steve Martin's album. I think we had a George Carlin album. I would study them, listen to them over and over again, count the beats, the rhythms, how many laughs they were getting. Definitely did this with Robin Williams, wrote it down on paper counted their laughs, wrote it all out, wrote out people's routines so I'd see what it looks like. I'd go to the library and I'd research. I'd take somebody that I really adored. At the time, it was Woody Allen. And I'd read everything Woody Allen. And then I'd read Who Influenced Him, which would be like Benchley and, and Perlman. And then I'd go read Who Influenced Them. And it would take me back to the... I ended up checking out books out of the library, the Boston Public Library, that had not been checked out since 1910. I have the card at home stamped last time, 1910. I stole it. Come get me. Come and get me. I stole from the public library in Boston the checkout card. You kids probably don't even know what a checkout card is. They used to stamp your card. Before there were computers, they would take out this card and they'd stamp the date and then the book had to be back within a week or two weeks. But that's how I was doing research. I, I studied everything comedy. And you learn. You learn the basics. And then once you know the basics, then you can go out and create your own style and do your own thing. But I also, I don't know how I discovered this, but there was a newsletter that this writer put out, his name's Gene Parrott. Gene died uh, in November of 2022. But prior to that, he put out this newsletter when I was when I was young, and it would arrive. I think it was like quarterly. Maybe it was monthly. And he had a book, uh, a comedy writing workshop, I believe. And I read that. But here's what's interesting. I did a show out here several years ago and his daughter, Linda, came to my show. I said, this is, that's wild. I said, I, I used to subscribe. She told me who she was. I said, it's wild. I used to subscribe to your father's newsletter. And she went home. And I guess she checked the database and I was in there. And then she shared my comedy with her father. With her father. And her father, whose newsletters I read and subscribed to, loved my comedy. And watch my special, and I'm going to say became a fan. And I'll tell you why. Because Saturday night, Linda told me the most interesting thing. And this is why I love comedy and I love my life. And this is 
this is a positive. I'm, I'm pointing out a positive. I know what's wrong with Orny Adams is very negative. We talk about I talk about a lot of negative things and what's wrong with the world and what's wrong with me. But here, here's an actual positive, an actual something good that happened. Linda said when her father was on his deathbed or dying or very sick and in the hospital, he wrote on a piece of paper something and handed it to Linda. And he said, this is my final routine. And she wanted to read it. And he said, don't, don't, don't read it. This is my final routine I will be delivering to God or when I get to heaven. And then he said, and I will be delivering it in the style of Orny Adams because I'm angry. Isn't that unbelievable? Here is a guy whose newsletter I subscribed to. I paid, I don't know, did I put cash in an envelope and send it to him? Did I have a checkbook at that time? Did my parents write a check? I subscribed to a newsletter. Later on, he comes back into my life, not only back into my life, but as an admirer of my work, which he influenced. And his daughter comes to my shows. She's been at my last two shows at the Ice House. It's full circle. And it's beautiful. And I, I don't know about you, would rather hear more stories like that than people being beat up at the cinema, people being beat up on planes, the violence, watching people steal, corruption. I know humans were capable of more. I know it. I've seen it. I also know we're capable of a lot less. I know it. I have seen it. Oh, all right. I'm going to end on this story. Uh, do I have anything else to say besides my Vegas trip? Hmm. I'm trying to think of what else, what other fun, fun, funny things have happened to me. Yeah, I've been doing shows around town. And it's fun to do these shows with other comedians. It's fun to do my own shows. Like in Las Vegas is my show. I'm headlining Ice House. I'm headlining. But it's also fun to do these group shows around town and hang out. And it reminds me of the early days. I, I have a lot of wonderful memories from stand-up comedy. I really do. I feel so fortunate to do it. And my life now is so overwhelmingly busy between doing the radio show and all this other stuff that I have coming up that I, I'm not really talking about right now. But I, I want to thank everyone that listens to this podcast. I really from my heart, I, I, I appreciate it. I appreciate the people that hang in there. I know it's not on a schedule. I know it's not every Tuesday. It's a lot of work. And right now, I'll be honest with you, this podcast is about 37 minutes. I'm wrapping it up because it's still 86.7 degrees in here. All right? And I am just sweating, and I'm going to make myself sick. And when I get off of this, I've got to audition. I now have a voiceover agent, so I'm auditioning for films and video games and all that stuff. So everything's busy, but it's good busy. But I never thought in my life, and and this makes me happy, that my career hasn't stopped. It's still moving forward. I'm going to knock on wood for that. I'm knocking on wood. Um, Yeah, I, I'm still obsessed with this story about this guy in Florida that got uh, killed by an alligator. Although not killed, not killed. They found him with three arms missing, but they still, coroner still has not determined cause of death. And I said on stage the other night, that's the worst coroner. If that guy can't figure that one out, how is he going to figure out like a real case? Missing three arms? I didn't even go to coroner no, 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 school and I could figure that one out. This happened in Illinois. Final story. And then I'll tell you a funny story about when I was at the ice house, what an audience member did. Firearm safety instructor accidentally shoots wife dead. Then turns gun on himself. I call BS. He's a firearm safety instructor and he doesn't know how to handle a gun. I have never taken a class on guns, know nothing about guns, didn't grow up with guns, have touched very few guns in my life, thank God. And I know never to point the barrel at anybody. Who the hell cleans a gun when somebody is in front of you? And if you're a firearms instructor, don't you know how to look in the barrel or whatever to see if there's even a bullet in there? This is such bullshit. And then he turned the gun on himself. No, he, I mean, I can't say for sure, but I don't even know, like the article gives no details. I've looked into it. They don't even say like, like what happened? Like they don't say like he killed the wife and then called 911 
and said, I accidentally killed my wife and then I'm going to take my own life. Like we don't have any details, but I'm just saying no way, no way. What do you think? What's wrong with safety instructors that don't know how to clean a gun? That's what I want to know. At my show Saturday night, and then I'm wrapping it up. Then I'm bringing it home. I got into my anti-marriage material, and I was so excited to talk about how I'm anti-marriage because I read recently that young people don't believe in marriage. And in fact, young women don't believe in marriage more than young men. I go, what's going on here? Now the women don't want to get married? And I spoke to an expert and she said, yeah, they don't want to get married because they don't need men anymore. I I saw this coming for years. First of all, we gave them the right to vote. Huge mistake. Of course, I'm kidding. Then equal pay, equal work, everything. They have jobs now and they can go to a sperm bank and get sperm. They don't need us. They don't need us. They don't need us. They don't want to get married. But I, I think the institution of marriage might be dated. It's my thought. I believe in monogamy, but I don't know if you need a piece of paper, the state, the law to tell you that you're married because getting out of it's too hard. It's so hard that gun instructors are pretending they're cleaning their guns and shooting their wives to get out of marriage. Not saying that happened in this case with this guy in Chicago, but maybe at one point in the past that happened. In fact, I think if they made divorce easier, probably less people would be killed. Just my thought. Remember that. I'll put that in my routine. Remember that. So I'm doing my anti-marriage stuff. A woman, I see the audience sort of snickering and turning around. I'm like, what's going on? Turn around. Woman's holding up a sign that says, marry me, Orny. I go, what is this? What's your sign say? Marry me? And and I said, are you listening to what I'm saying? I'm I'm doing anti-marriage stuff. I'm against marriage. And uh, she said, yeah, yeah, yeah. And she's like, put the sign there. She got shy all of a sudden. Because I had a camera crew there. So then they, they zoom in with the cameras. I'm like, here we go. We have a, now we have a viral moment. Uh, I said, have you ever been married? She said, yeah, I'm married right now. My husband's over there. I said, if you need a better example of how hard marriage is, She's married, proposing to me in front of her husband who's sitting over. She's sitting here. The husband's over there. That's why marriage doesn't work. And I thought, this is going to be a great moment. Except the audience wasn't even laughing. So now I can't put it out. What could have been one of my greatest moments on stage. Got denuded and stripped by an audience that either was so shocked that this was happening, they thought it was a setup, or maybe it just wasn't funny. I don't know. What just flew off of my microphone? What's wrong with Orny Adams? Episode 86. There we go. We did it. We did it. The trailer's now at 86.4 degrees, 37% humidity. Thank you, Ernesto Hurtado. Thank you, everybody that listens, everybody that subscribes, everybody that comes to my shows, everyone that comes up to me at Poblock. I want to thank you. Screw you to the people who aren't listening. Guess what? Screw you. You don't even know I just told you to screw you because you don't listen. You don't listen. Coming soon to a uh, comedy club or theater near you is me, Orny Adams. Check out my tour schedule. Email me any questions or comments about this podcast or what's wrong at ornyadams.com. And enjoy this heat. Enjoy everything. I'm going to be inside sweating. I'm going to start inside sweating even more because I'm preparing for when I get charged more money for my electrical bill based on my income. This world, unbelievable. Unbelievable. Thank you, everybody. And be safe and uh, try kindness. Try kindness for a change.